Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman, and this is the Buchla 700. It would be fair to say that there are not a lot of Buchla 700s out there. If you find yourself with a Buchla 700 and are working on getting it working, maybe some of the discoveries I talk about here will help. First of all, the Buchla 700 has a three and a half inch floppy drive, and you'll need the operating system on disk for this to work, or you might be able to replace this with a modern emulator that uses an SD card or a USB stick, in which case you'll need to prepare an appropriate image file. So to figure out the disk format, let's take a look at some of the source code by Lynx Crow, in particular this BIOS.s file, which is in 68,000 assembly code. So that's good times. So looking through the source code, I found four boot parameter blocks. I think the relevant one is this one here, 80 tracks, double-sided, 720K. So there's 19 bytes here. I decoded that boot parameter block data and found that it's basically the most bog standard IBM PC 720K disk format that there was. So this would have been like the three and a half inch floppies that I would have been saving my assignments to in one of the labs when I was a senior in college. I will note that if you're trying to write a 720K floppy using one of these USB floppy drives that's really designed for a 1.4 megabyte floppy. I have seen some discussion online that that can be problematic with some drives. So that's something you might want to look into if you're doing this. If you have any insights on this, please leave a comment below. But regardless of what kind of three and a half inch disc you have, reading it shouldn't be a problem. So if by any chance you're watching this and you have an original Buchla 700 disc with the operating system MIDA 7 on it, please make an image of it and upload it to the Internet Archive or upload it to a GitHub and let everyone know where it is. And let's make sure that we as a community preserve this vital data and try to keep these machines running. There is a group that was able to compile Lynx's source code and get it running in an emulator that they created. Unfortunately, it doesn't make sound, but it does run the main OS. Anyway, I'm going to use this to illustrate what happens during the boot up process. Okay, let me start up the emulator. There's a screen that's not doing anything right now. And I also have the LCD display that corresponds to the display on the Buchla. No, okay, so there's something weird going on. The emulator isn't showing the full display, but I'm not gonna worry about that now. Anyway, on the original Buchla, the LCD display has a row of buttons under it. So there's a button under load disk and a button under go to ROM. So I'm gonna talk about both of these. And right now what I'm going to do in the emulator is I'm going to hit control A that corresponds to pressing the button under load disk. So this is going to go to the disk and it takes a while because it's emulating an old machine, and it's gonna load the Midas operating system and run it for us. Anytime now. Okay, is it working? Oh, by the way, I should mention that you do have to click on the LCD window and have it active for this to work. Ah, there it goes. Okay, Midas 7 initialization in progress. Ah, so we see the screens going, and it's showing stuff on the display, et cetera, et cetera. So that's nice. Okay, so let's talk about what happened behind the scenes. The firmware in the Buchla 700 consists of the BIOS.s file that we looked at earlier, that's assembly language, and this romp.c file. Here we see a define for boot key, and so the internal number for that key that I pressed in the emulator by using control A in the emulator is number 39. To actually enter the ROMP debugger, which we'll do later, you need to press the ROMP key, which has the internal number 40. And notice that the boot file here, the operating system file, is hard-coded as Midas.abs. And here's the code that handles that. If we press the boot key, then we use this booter function to load the boot file. And then there's this s jump to command that actually starts the operating system. Notice it does both of these in sequence. If pressing load disks works for you on your Buchla 700, great. If not, 
it would be good to get some diagnostic information. Well, that's where this go to romp thing comes in. Turns out you can hook an external terminal up to the Buchla 700. So let me click on LCD and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type control B and that emulates pressing the button below go to romp on the original. And now we see that we're in like Flynn. So this romp is a debugger. I can type help. Actually, let me click on it and then type help. And I can see that there's all these commands. So this isn't something that Buchla would have expected end users to use. But when he and Lynx Crow were developing the Buchla 700, this is what they would have used to help test things out and debug things and figure out what's going on. And there's all sorts of stuff we can do here. We can look at memory, we can poke things into memory, we can play with registers. It looks like we can write individual sectors to a disk and read individual sectors from a disk, all sorts of stuff. So one of the commands in here is called Midas. That actually loads the operating system. So I'm gonna type Midas. And one thing I want to mention is that this isn't a generic run a command on the disk called Midas. If I put a file on the disk called Fred, this won't run a program called Fred. This is just for loading the operating system. Now, this is gonna take a while, but there's one thing I wanna point out, which is that this doesn't run the operating system on its own. It lets us load the operating system. It will print out some diagnostic information. And then if we want, we can look at the operating system in memory and do other stuff. Ah. There we go. So file Midas.abs loaded from 10000 hex to wherever. There's checksums. That's cool. Now, if I want to run this, I type go and let's put in 10000 with the dollar sign to indicate hex. And that should now actually run the program. So this gives us the opportunity to see this information here. So fun fact, remember that boot file define? Well, let's take a look at the code that actually implements the Midas command. So here, Lynx didn't use that boot file define. He just coded Midas.abs right in there. So Midas.abs, that's an important file name. So here it goes through all the business of loading that into memory, but again, it doesn't run it. Now, let's take a look at this booter function. So that's in its own file, booter.c, and now we know what a .abs file is. It's an absolute format Alcyon object file. So here you can see the code that prints out the information we saw in the successful load case. It says the file was loaded. It tells us about the checksum, et cetera, et cetera. But if you scroll back a little bit, you see that it can also give you other error messages like unable to read the file, or it can say that it has bad magic, whatever bad magic is. It could complain that it's unable to read the header. Anyway, by trying to load the operating system in the debugger, we have this new rich source of debugging information. So how do we hook a terminal up to the Buchla 700? Well, there's two 25-pin RS-232 connections on the back, one for a printer and one for a host. Let's suppose for a second that the debugger talks to the host connection. I don't know if that's true or not. I think it's most likely true because when I look in the bios.s file, there's this reference to serial one being a printer and serial two being a host and serial two also being a console. So I think that makes sense. Now, people aren't generally rocking VT100 terminals nowadays. You'll probably be using a computer running any of a large number of terminal emulator programs. Now, most modern computers don't have RS-232 ports on them, but you can get RS-232 to USB adapters, and you can even get ones that have 25 pins instead of the 9 pins, though you could probably use a 9 pin to 25 pin adapter if you need to. Now, one thing you want to be very careful about is you want to get a 25 pin RS-232 serial adapter cable. You do not want to get a 25 pin parallel adapter. The parallel is not what you want here. You want the RS-232 serial version. Now, one other complication is it looks like that this is a mail connector and the connector on the Buchla 700 is a mail connector. So you might have to get an adapter of some sort. And there may be some subtleties in here about 
RS-232 connections that I'm overlooking. Now, what parameters should you tell your terminal program to use? Based on this bit of code in BIOS.S, I'm going to say 9600 baud, the number of stop bits should be 1, number of data bits is 8, and there is no parity bit. So let's look up some of these things. So P none, okay, here we have a bunch of different parity selections. It looks like this is probably no parity. That's kind of obvious. What about NDB8? Let's see the options there. Okay, so you can have number of data bits five, six, seven, eight. It looks like we're picking eight. Let's see, NSB underscore one. So you can have one or two stop bits, and here we're using one stop bit. And let's see what other data rates it supports. Ah, okay, so here's a list of all the data rates, and it looks like they're using 9600. I'll also mention that in the emulator, you can go to the ROMP by typing R instead of Control-B. 